I said, I'm not retiring. I'm going back to Iraq. I said, nope. I'm not done killing Muslims yet. But she's still Muslim, dude. She's got to go. If I can, I'll do it myself. I, I was waiting for Ramadan. Okay. Yeah. Ramadan, you were going to do it in Ramadan. That's when they're all there. Every day you were thinking about it. Yeah. Every day. And I slowly pieced the bomb together. You were ready to go to jail or... I was ready to be executed. I, yeah. Oh. And, and even though I knew it was against the law, it was the right thing to do. The flag was my cross. I right. worshipped that thing. These invaders were here. They handed me a Quran. Okay. And they said, read it. And they just handed me the holy grail to evil. What moment? made you change. This country does not act in a Christian way. It just doesn't. You don't yes. tell people about Islam. Show them. I was shooting at a paper target and the paper target started to bleed. The Quran? The, the Quran is... is, is as alaykum Asalaamu Alaikum ladies and gentlemen, uh, brothers and sisters. I am honored and privileged, Alhamdulillah, for meeting Brother Richard McKinney here in Muncie, Indiana. Brother Richard, where are we headed first of all? Well, we're headed to speaking engagement I have. Going to churches as well, right? So Churches, synagogues, as well as uh, masjids. Brother Richard came from the church to the masjid and now he's going from the masjid to the churches. Tell me about your uh, early days in your life. Not much different than, you know, most people that grew up when I grew up. Grew up a happy kid, more or less. I didn't really know that I didn't really have anything I did without. I grew up as part of the system, welfare and food stamps and all that. And where was know. that? This here? is in Cincinnati, Ohio. Oh, okay. Yeah. Not too far from here. Not, not okay. too far, about, th about three right. hours. After that, you joined the military? Yeah, it was a decision I made because I was kicked out of school for my involvement with drugs. I didn't, didn't have an education. I didn't have any job training. I said, well, this is the only thing that's going to get me out. So I joined the military. So it was an escape yeah. from a vicious cycle that you were going through with drugs and stuff? Absolutely. How was that experience in the military? It ended up overall being a very good experience. Uh, I found a family. I found a place I belonged and uh, it gave me what I was really, really looking for. You went overseas to oh, yes. tours um, to Afghanistan I've, or Iraq? I've been on every continent except Antarctica. Wow. <laughs> MashaAllah, brother. Yeah. That's, uh, you've been everywhere, deployed everywhere. I used to oh. tell people if, until they put penguins on a terrorist watch list, I probably would not go to Antarctica. <laughs> So when you were back in the U.S., mm -hmm. you moved to Muncie. It's, it's kind of a longer story. Um, I, right. I did my time in the Marine Corps. I did almost eight years in the Marine Corps and decided that I was going to try the civilian life again. Oh, okay. And within the two years that I was a civilian, I ended up coming here to Muncie for a fight. Uh, it was in the uh, mid-90s, and uh, I was a competitive kickboxer. Oh, and I wow. came here for a fight. And was only going to be here a couple months, uh, but it, right, was a, so it was a temporary relocation. Yeah. yeah, I actually lived in one of the roadside hotels on the south side of town. I didn't even have an apartment oh. or anything. I just lived in a hotel. No yeah. plans at all. None. Uh, wow. And I ended up staying. Long story short, right. I ended up staying. Never made it as a pro, professional kickboxer. Uh, too much drinking. Too much womanizing. Just. Oh, that wow. little window that I had open for me to make my make my move, right? Nah, it closed. So was I, it? I'm sorry, but was it the like your vulnerability to drink or womanize? Was it your PTSD, or what? What was the reason for that? Uh, in your it, it was it was an accepted thing. Uh, okay. Um, the alcohol. Right. In the military, that's one of the things in the, in the American military is, is is drinking. And we even have a saying for it. it: you work hard, you play hard. Right. That's that's it. Uh, you, you know. Uh, right. So you were 
playing hard. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so it it was normal. Basically, there was nothing questionable about the behavior. Mm -hmm. right? okay. It's hard to find somebody in the military that actually does not drink. Oh wow! It's okay. it's just. What we did. I saw the documentary, but the, your your documentary, and uh, obviously, uh, mashallah, the details are already there for people who want to watch it. Please do check out uh, "Stranger at the Gate" by uh, the New Yorker magazine. Absolutely amazing, mashallah. And for those Muslim and people of other faith who haven't seen your story or heard about it, uh, I wanted them to know with your own. Uh, voice that let's start from the uh, main incident that changed your life but before that I want to know what were your thoughts about Muslims I I hated Muslims I mean and even to, to, to say I hated Muslims is it, it's hard to people don't get the right feeling that I had I mean hate it usually people say hate is a strong word but it's how strong is it it's misused nowadays right so, um, so when you say hate you mean the hundred percent of the meaning yes um, and I saw them as the great evil in the world uh, I even refer to it as a cancer. Oh. Islam was a cancer. Yeah, Islam was a cancer, and I used to tell people, and I'm going to be the surgeon to remove it. That's what I would tell people. Um, and what made you think that way? Like, I mean. Brother, you seem like a, you know, you don't seem like a hater or a racist person, but was it specifically Muslims and Islam that you had a hatred towards? Um, well, anybody that was here illegally, too. I mean, okay. yeah, I was, I, so, so I was, I was pretty much a xenophobe, I guess right. is the right word to use, yeah. Right. Uh, but, but my, my true hatred dealt with, um... Islam, and at the time, you know, for most or even the outspoken American society, it was the enemy. Yeah, you know, it really was um, because of all the ignorance that we believe through the media and everything else. It's it just was, and being somebody who had actually fought against Muslims or what are described as as Muslims, I saw them as something that needed to be removed. It just does. And it wasn't from a religious standpoint because, you know, I, you had mentioned earlier yeah. that I came from the church to the mosque. Yes. I was not a Christian. Oh, um, really? And I say that, I say that because I respect Christianity. Right. I honestly do. I, I, it's a beautiful religion. Just like Islam, we have our bad people, so do they, and we have our good people. And so do they, you know, yes. it's just, it, it's it, the religion itself is a beautiful faith. Beautiful. There's a lot of wisdom in it, Yeah. but I would never call myself a, a, a Christian simply because of my respect, because I was not acting like a Christian. Right. I was, I was hating. I was wanting to kill. I was, I was treating right. people disrespectfully, you know, and that's not, that's not Christianity. No, absolutely not. Uh, so, so you were born a Christian, but never well, you thought of yourself as a Christian or identify as a Christian. I think that's where a lot of people that are that are ethnic Muslims that are born into the religion get a little bit confused because yep. we don't we don't really believe in the being born Christian thing. Right. You're you, you're right. born to your country, and oh. then it goes to society. Um, right. You know so. I don't consider America to be a Christian nation as as much as people Whoa. say it is because <laughs> be, because the same reasons I don't call myself a Christian before yes out of respect because yes. it, this country does not act in a Christian way it just doesn't <laughs> so Brother, there's, you know it's interesting because there's so many I think that's the right turn from here oh, yeah I see there are so many, uh, I know so many Muslims uh, from overseas that keep saying this is a very Christian country, 
you know, it's more Christian than any other country. So, well, <laughs> you know, yeah. maybe. Uh, I, I, I yeah, can't. That's, it, that's not for me to say, but yeah. I, but but uh, no, I I, I understand actions, what you're right? saying. Yes, actions, actions speak louder that's than words. That's what I tell my brothers at the masjid all the time. It's actions. You don't yes. tell people about Islam. Show them. Right, that's what I tell them, and and it's the same thing, you know, with, with any other faith. Absolutely. Yeah. And uh, yeah, mashallah, that's that's really amazing insights. Uh, thank you, brother Richard, for that. It's uh, it's a lot to understand a different perspective that makes sense. So. Nice turn signal. Okay. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. All right. <laughs> so let's talk about the fateful day okay. at the Islamic Center of Mansi. So you come back and you saw Muslims walking around here in this area. The first time you saw a Muslim here, what was your first gut reaction? I felt nauseous. I was like... Well, I mean, and so the thing is, they had always been here. Right. Okay. They had always been here, but I never noticed them. And then when I when right. I came back the final time, mm -hmm. back to Muncie, uh, I had I was basically awaiting retirement. I was being medically retired because I got injured in Iraq. Okay. Right. And I was upset about that because I didn't want to be retired. Yeah. Right. Uh, and that put. That's when I started noticing them. They've been here the whole time. Yeah. But I never noticed. I never cared. I never, it wasn't a big deal to me, you know? Yeah. It was like, uh, sure. But I felt like, you know, these invaders were here, you know? Yeah. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm looking at these women covered from head to toe and I'm thinking, you know, my yeah. mind, they got a bomb vest on underneath oh there or something God. like that, you, you know, the, in my yeah. mind because yeah. that's what I know. Right? Yeah. Um, and because that's the way I had to look at the women over there. I had to. I didn't have a choice. The kids, too. I had to look at everybody like they were a potential bomb. Right. I mean, we had to. Um, yeah. Because, yeah, it might be. Yeah, it might be. And it, but, and it several times it was. Not, not, but it was, not my witnesses, but, you know. Yeah. I mean, it, yeah. And, but it was so ingrained in your mind that even though... It's a totally different environment. You're in America and everything, but still you're thinking mm -hmm. that that is a highly possible uh, yeah. possibility. Yeah, and, and so, you know, and it wasn't the military that really, I mean, over there, yes, this is things you got to be aware of, you got to think, right? This is the situational awareness, right? Yes. But it, it wasn't that they instilled that in me. And my, my hatred for Islam did not come out of any kind of indoctrination through the military at right. all. I had friends of mine. We I remember one time we were sitting in the chow hall and we were talking about it and they brought it up and says, Man, why are you hating on these Muslims so bad? Really? Because we were actually in Bosnia at the time, right? Oh. And you know, so super Bosnia Muslim has country, a, yeah. yeah, yeah. You know, the, this was after the civil war and all this and it was Yeah, and the, the genocide, yes. Yeah. And, and so, you know, they asked me, so why, man? Why you make Muslims so bad? Yeah. And I mean, and I mean Bosnians, uh, I mean, the fact that they're Muslim, but racially speaking, they're white as well, right? So yeah, they're the European. Part. Yeah. So, and still, it, it's like, it doesn't matter if they're brown or white. You were thinking they're Muslim. They need my... <laughs> Yeah, yeah. That's what they deserve. I had actually told them a story that's kind of harsh. Right? Sure. I, I don't I don't say this very much anymore because, it, okay. you know, people get offended or triggered. Usually, right. But right. What, that, that conversation took place in the chow hall, and right. they brought up my interpreter. Her name was Sarah, and she was Bosnian, a 20-something European girl. Okay. Right. Uh, so, and, and, and not to speak ill of her or, or, that, or, or their, their ways, but European Muslims are not as orthodox as Middle Eastern or Afghani. Yeah, you know, absolutely. not, right? Yeah. I mean, she was dating. She was going out partying. I'm sure she drank, I, you know. But the right. thing was, she was our interpreter, and, and I liked her. 
right. because she took care of us. Right. I also, in turn, took care of her because even though at the core I did not like her, I hated her, and I wanted her dead. Right. She's in my charge. She's safe. Right. We went to a village in a Serbian. It was a Serbian village within Bosnia. Unless you understand the infrastructure of Bosnia, that doesn't yeah. make any sense. But yeah. So we went there, and I, I was tasked with with having a meeting with the police chief. Okay. So I sat down with the police chief, and he's saying and looking at her and saying stuff to her, and she was getting real uncomfortable. I could tell by the look on her face. I didn't know exactly what they were saying, but right. he was he was sounding very aggressive and had a very aggressive posture on his face, right? And and I said, no, 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 no. I said, what's he saying? And she said, no, it, it's nothing. It's no big deal. I said, oh, no. I got up, stood up, took my M4, pointed it right in his face, and said, if you ain't got nothing nice to say, you shut up. And I looked at her. I said, you word for word translate that. Tell him that. Mm -hmm. And he backed up, and he's like, and that was the end of that. So she will not be treated like that when she's in my care, okay? Sure. That's the way it is. That's the way I am, even though I yeah. wanted her dead. So I, had to, they asked me, I said, well, you like Sarah, man. What about Sarah? I said, yeah, I like Sarah, man. She's, she, she's good to us. And, you know, I try to return a favor when I can. So, uh, and uh, I said, but she's still Muslim, dude. She's sure. got to go. If I can, I'll do it myself. I'll do a nine oh, to the back of the head. Whoa. And she'll go quick. <laughs> but she still got to go. See, that's hatred. And that's how I explain hatred. Because, you know, we can hate things. I, yeah. I, I I still hate things. I hate lima beans and the New England Patriots. Okay? <laughs> I, I know it's not right, but, man, I can't stand them, guys. Gosh. Uh, but, yeah. you know, I mean, so that was where my hatred was at. And it just built and built and built. And then after Bosnia, it was Afghanistan. And Afghanistan, it was Iraq. And then in Iraq, they blew me out of the building. And, you know, it was like, yeah. whatever, you know. Yeah. And, and, and well, I fought the forced retirement because I told them. I said, no, 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 no. I'm not retiring. I'm laying in a hospital bed. I said, I'm not retiring. I'm going back to Iraq. Oh. And they said, why do you want to go back to Iraq, man? You did your time. You, yeah. you have nothing to prove. You're done. You know, you're going to make out now. We're going to give you a check every month. We'll send you to school if you want to go to school. Right. You're good, man. I said, nope. I'm not done killing Muslims yet. That's what I told them. Well, if I wasn't guaranteed to be discharged at, up to then, once I made that statement... They were making sure I got out <laughs> because I was labeled cuckoo after that. <laughs> Blacklisted. He's done. He is done. Yeah. And, so, uh, uh, yeah, I, I understand hatred now, brother. I, I fully understand what yeah. you meant by that word. And uh, okay, so so you're back in Mansi and plan to take out the Muslims at the Islamic Center. Around 200, right, at the Friday prayers. It was, well, it was. It was. I, I. I was waiting for Ramadan. Okay, yeah. Ramadan. You were going to do it in Ramadan. That's when they're all there. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so I tell people. I said, well, you. you, you you know, it's like Catholic Mass when I tell, explain to non-Muslims. It's like right. it's like Christmas Mass at a Catholic church. Everybody's there. Yeah. <laughs> the rest of the year, maybe not yeah. so much, but everybody's there during wow. Ramadan. Right? Ramadan, yeah, the yeah. holy month. So of Ramadan. Wow. So yeah, so I I devised a plan, uh, a, right. a time frame. I actually had planned it. It was over two years that I went through this. I didn't just do it. I. So it's very two meticulous. years. You you took two years to plan it. Very meticulous. Every day you were thinking about it. Yeah, every day. That's a long time to think about something. And I slowly right? pieced the bomb together. Oh wow! So I, uh, you know, because yeah. again, you know, I'm not a mastermind criminal, but I've seen a lot of crime movies. Yeah. You know, and you don't do stuff just up and do it, right? Yes. Too many, too many red flags get raised, right? And yes. I didn't want to get caught before I had a chance to actually yeah. finish this. And I ain't tell anybody yet. And, and Nobody what, knew. And after that, what? What were you thinking, like, after that? You were gonna... You were ready to go to jail, or... 
I was ready to be executed. I, yeah, Whoa. yeah, yeah. In this country, you, you, that, that's a federal crime, and they will, they will, yeah. lethal inject you for that. I mean, that's mass Tap murder. punishment, you right? Can't do it. Yeah, it's mass murder. You can't. Yeah. And and even though I knew it was against the law, it was the right thing to do. That that's that was the way I felt, right? Mm. So. And it wasn't religious, or it wasn't any ideology. I was a nationalist, um, patriot. Yeah, yeah. It was, that's why I saw myself, right? right? And 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 uh, when it came to the way I explain it to to non-Muslims, because they 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 really get this, but the flag was my cross. Right. I worshipped that thing. That was that was it. That was it for me, right? Uh, I understand. Yeah. So, I understand. And they were the enemy. Yeah, yeah, the Muslims. Absolutely. They were the enemy that were here to invade and destroy the country. And so you were there to save it. Do the right thing. So you walk into the building. Mm-hmm. And then what happens? I'm greeted with smiles and welcome. What were you going to do, though? Like, when you walked in, you, were, you weren't there to blow up the bomb, right? Well, so. because of a prior discussion that I had yeah. ended up having with my daughter, my young daughter at the right. time. Right, right. Um, up until that point, I never saw that this involved anybody else but me. Never right. thought in a right. million years, you know? I mean, it, it, was, yeah. it was a selfish thing, right? And, and I never thought it... it it, it meant anything to anybody else. It's just what I'm doing, and I'm doing it for my country. Yeah. And then to see how puzzled she looked by my anger when she brought up a, a you know, a Muslim that a Muslim boy at school that she had met, right? Yeah. And and she didn't. Understand. She saw your inner hate. Right. So I know I'm right in the way I feel, but I need some kind of tangible proof. Right. To so, give to, to other people to show them that I'm right. To justify. I didn't know how else to do it besides just go to the source. And that's what, and, that's what led me there. And you were expecting to find something there? Yeah, to, yeah. To some, show your something daughter. over time. I, I knew I probably wouldn't find it the first day. You know, <laughs> there, but over I time, something. <laughs> I was kind of like, I was kind of like. It, Pulling a pulling an undercover brother kind of thing, right? Okay. You know, Infiltration. I, I I introduced myself as somebody who just wanted to learn a little bit more about Islam. Right. And they were more than happy. Um, you know, and they greeted me very friendly, and I'm like, ah, okay, that's that's a ploy. They're just doing yeah. that. They're just doing that. Yeah. Fake, fake and then news. they handed me a Quran. <laughs> okay. And they said, read it. Come back when you have questions. I didn't show it on my face, but I was overjoyed. I was having a party inside because I was just so happy. They just handed me, in, in, in my mind at the time, they just handed me the holy grail to evil. And then, and then yeah. they're going to explain it to me on top of that? Oh, my gosh. So what more do you need, right? Exactly. And as time went on, I, I, I was treated the same way. I was invited to people's homes. These people don't even know me. They don't know anything about me, man, but that that's their way, you know? Um, what moment did... What moment made you change? What moment that that light from Allah come inside? Well... The very first thing, and it didn't it didn't change me. It, it right. started the process. Felt something. And that was when I got to Sarah 5, 32nd verse, when it says, to kill one human being is to kill all of humanity, but to save one human being is to save all of humanity. And I thought about that, and I'm like, hmm. wait a minute. I'm not a real intellectual person. <laughs> But that made a light bulb come on, right? Because I'm thinking, wait a minute, my impression of what Islam truly is yeah. are those guys that were shooting at me and blowing yeah. themselves up and trying to kill me and my friends. Yes. That's Islam in my mind, right? But here I have these people, and I'm reading their book, and like Christians and, 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 and like Jews, they they are, you know, yeah. bound to try to live as closely to the wording of their scriptures as possible. Right? Yes. And the ones here in Muncie are doing that. They are, for the most part, you know, as best they can, of yeah. course. The practicing. Know? Yeah. And I'm Islam like, Islam, the best they can. Everything in this book tells me that what they're doing is wrong. I mean, 
even the rules of war when it talks about you know yeah the, you know religion. I mean as a soldier you yeah, must have felt it yeah it's you know they were going against what it said in the Quran and I was like wow so what a, that's not a good example of what Islam is so that's when I started to think wait a minute I might have this wrong yeah and as I went on and I went on and I, I mean I just kept reading I kept I kept studying and I, I would spend you know like I would tell people I said you know it wasn't Ramadan yet so I was actually at the masjid more than the Muslims were <laughs> <laughs> subhanallah and, and Allah guides who he wills yeah and, and I was just trying to learn everything I can and then when I get to the to the to the last few surahs of the Quran mm. and I get to al Kafirun and it talks about I don't believe the way I, I I don't believe the way you believe you don't believe the way I believe we will never believe the same you go your way I go mine I'm like oh my gosh that's coexistence that's what that is it's a lot of fun. because we we're, we're the same but we're different yes and we're not going to change because of someone else yeah that's coexistence man and I'm thinking oh my gosh I need this and that's when it all that and I had a dream that was real bizarre that was an eye was a yeah and, and kind of an awakening kind of thing uh, but tell us about the dream if, well if you don't so mind. one of the things I had learned early on in my military career because like I said I'd gotten out but I didn't t tell you that two years later I ended up joining the army which I had retired from right and uh, uh, while I was in the Marine Corps you know I, I talked about I, I, I went to somebody that was higher ranking than I was and, and said hey how do you cope man I, I'm having some, some issues how, how do you cope with this whole yeah you know post retirement the, no 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 about about the actual takings t taking of lives right how, how do you right. cope with that and and we talked and we sat down and he says you're on the range you know qualifying range you're shooting you know when you're becoming a better shot right and you're shooting at these paper targets yeah they are nothing more than paper targets that's what you got to think in your mind it's the dehumanization right yes because us as human beings we're not made that way yeah we, you know you hear people all the time get mad like, I'm gonna kill them yeah. <laughs> no, you're not. Yeah. Because you're not made that way. And the ones that are, something's broke. Yes. It just is. So, so, um, they, uh, so you, you have to learn techniques. That's why, I like, like boot camps yeah. are so harsh because they have to learn, they have to teach you how to think differently and how to look at things differently, right? Yeah. And, Absolutely. and you can only do that through force. You can't. There's no other way to do it. Yeah. And, um, but I said, yeah, paper target. So the dream I had when it when, when it changed was I, I had a dream. I was on the range and I was shooting at a paper target and the paper target started to bleed. Oh, in the dream. In the dream. It's funny. And I went down to wipe off the blood on the target. It wouldn't stop. Just kept bleeding, and kept bleeding, and kept bleeding. Yeah, that was it, man. And that's when it hit me. You that's when you have been wrong this whole time. Send the dehumanization turn into humanization. Allah put the humanity into that paper. Target. Yeah. Subhanallah. Hey, Brother Richard, uh, there's a lot of Muslim, uh, potential Muslims out there, a lot of Americans, Caucasian Americans, and people from other races that are curious about Islam and they might even want to become Muslim. Uh, they respect the religion and they, they, they are really thinking about it. What message would you give them? Seek it out. Learn. Find a Muslim. Ask questions. Um, and if they don't treat you right, get a hold of me and let me know. <laughs> we'll fix that. Yeah. Because that's not Islam. Um, you know, um, the Quran. The the Quran is 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 the greatest the greatest gift from Allah. The, 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 he uh, it's just 
there's so much in there, and it's and it's funny because we, you know we hear people well read the Quran, read the Quran. You can't read the Quran. You have to study the Quran. You can't read it. It's not it's not a it's not a James Patterson novel. You, you don't read it. You study it, and and you take it in, and you try to get something from that that's going to stick. That's going to make you think before you act. That's going to make you act in a in a different way and and look at people in a different way, not in a judgmental way. Which we, we still have that problem. Yeah, I mean, in our humans. religion and all of the other religions, yeah. we, we we judge people as being haram or or, yeah. or or doing bad things. Yes, and maybe they are. Maybe they are. But is that hurting you? That's my big question. Is it hurting you? Turn away. Yeah. Turn away. Or go up to them and start a conversation. Don't go up to them and tell them how screwed up they are and how 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 they need to change. Their, nobody wants to hear that. Nobody's yeah. going to hear that. Because um, yeah. then you just be then because then it just comes down to, to proselytizing. Yeah. It's, yeah. So, uh, w- one last thing, brother Richard. According to data and numbers, uh, white supremacist groups are the number one domestic terrorist threat to the United States right now. Mm-hmm. And you held that anger and hatred towards Muslims as well. But Alhamdulillah Allah has, has changed you and mashallah. What message do you have for these groups or those people that have all this and they're actively working towards hurting people from all backgrounds, not just Muslims. Mm-hmm. Um, get out of your bubble. Get out of your bubble. Learn about the people next to you. Learn about your neighbors. They have a right to exist as much as anybody does. But you're never going to believe that until finally, finally, you get to understand them. I became a Muslim. That's not what I'm telling people. I'm not telling people you need to be a Muslim. I'm not doing that because that was a personal journey for me. That's the way it ended up. That was not what I was about. But you need to understand who our neighbors are. You need to open up. And just because they do things differently doesn't make it wrong. You know, and that, that's one of the bigger things, I think, is that we see people. We see people that are different from different backgrounds and different cultures. Like, okay, let's just say the women. Yeah. Wearing hijabs, wearing burkas, wearing all, you know, it's like, yeah. man, it's hot out here. What are you throwing clothes on for <laughs> you know, I mean, seriously, seriously, yeah. right? It, yeah. That it, that's one of the one things that a lot of Americans are like, why? Yeah. And there's a reason. And if you really look at the history, the reason is not really much different from our own. We just faded away from it. They did. That's it. But you can only do that through understanding. Absolutely. And any final messages that you'd like to give to the viewers? Like I tell people, change is only made through us. Change doesn't happen. Allah put us here to work together. He actually says that in the Quran. Made us in different nations and tribes so that we would learn from one another, right? When did we stop learning? When? We can change things. We can change change perspectives. We can change societies. And it's easy. It all starts with a smile and a conversation.